Alright, so here are my speedruns for Zemus' collection of hacked bosses. This is a recording after the fact, it's not live, because I didn't want to be repeating myself 80 times until I actually got lucky enough that any of these strategies would work. This first battle here is pretty much a given, because they're weak to instant death, which means you can just cast X-Zone twice and you win. So, that's pretty much all there is to say about this one. I'm also probably going to make another video that does not have the audio commentary just in case you find my voice annoying or don't want to hear me talk the entire time. So I'll probably put that in the video responses somewhere. This second uh, battle with statuses allowed but not instant death allowed is uh, not much harder than the first one. As you can see, I r really didn't bother to equip Lockyer or Edgar seriously. They don't really have any reason to be there besides spelling out the words at the bottom. This battle is easily incapacitated by berserking them and casting Vanish on your characters, so you don't need to worry about getting hit or anything, you can just spam them. I didn't bother uh, having all four characters attack because then I'd have to cast Vanish on all four of them, whereas as it is, I only have to cast Vanish on two, and as you can see, it takes the entire time of an animation for one of their bars to pretty much fully recharge, so it's really not wasting any time not having the other party members. The enemy's attacks don't take up any time either, so just no reason to have the other two doing anything. It could have been gone entirely, it would have made no difference. I experimented with different type ways of doing damage in this battle. This seems to be the fastest, I'm not 100% sure. The Darkness Crystal uh, doesn't get hit by fire, he absorbs it, so Pearl Rods are the fastest thing left available. So yeah, this is pretty much just me spamming a whole bunch of pearl rods. If you want to go ahead and skip it, go ahead and skip it. It's not that interesting. <laughs> It'll be interesting in the next fight. And he's dead. Alright, this effects. Just for the reference, the difficulty level is the difficulty level of speed running the boss, not the difficulty level of just beating it, period, so... Easier bosses on the list and harder bosses on the list are probably going to be fairly close together. This took considerably more effort to do than the other two videos, because you have to deal with holy judgment or something counters pretty much every time you get, every time you attack that thing at the top, lightness crystal. So you pretty much only get one attack with each character before you have to throw a mega elixir.
Now you can only cast Merton once, I, because it charges Comet from the Darkness Crystal and you don't want to waste time eating a Comet counter. So that's why I only use Merton once. It is able to reheal me and do damage to the Lightness Crystal at the same time, so as you can see she just barely survives this. And only because of Region 2. And but that allows me to heal everyone up very conveniently, so it's good to throw that in there. I absorb ice, so this doesn't do anything. After that Megalix, so there's no way this Darkness Crystal can take me out. One thing that's a bit of a time waster here is that he'll use a Condemned counter every single time you damage him with the Pearl Rods, so I may have been able to do it a little bit faster if I managed to equip a safety bit on people so that they just block it with the shield. But I'd probably also have to drop my damage a little bit, so it would be a bit of a trade-off there. I don't know if it would be worth it. Edgar's just kind of sitting there twiddling his thumbs at this point. Not a whole lot he can do. Attacking with the drill would just be a waste of time compared to Pearl Rods or Ultima spells, so no reason to do that. I also have him set up with the Genji Glove and Offering with an Atma weapon, but that also triggers a comet counter, I think, so just gonna finish him off with the pearl rods. Alright, so this next fight here is Gestal with Quick Allowed. Now, if you've played this hack before, you might remember that Zemus nerfed Quick, but Ironically, in nerfing it, he ended up making it even better. The The quick spell now is meant to freeze your entire party when you try to use it. However, it can also target the entire enemy party, and since even bosses can't be immune to freeze, it's pretty much like multi-target stop that nothing can dodge. So, it's pretty much an instant win here. This battle's still a little bit more luck reliant than it looks like. Loki has to get his turn off before any of the orbs, and usually one of them will cast Big Guard or they'll cast Goner before you can do anything. So this took a few restarts still. But once you get it, this is really quick. No pun intended. That was really a complete accident. I could have equipped Realm with the Magus Rod here instead of the Greatest, and it, she would be doing a tiny bit more damage, but it wouldn't save any time. Doesn't really matter. About the multiple videos, I'm obviously submitting the fastest one you're gonna accept. So. Some of these are, even though they're possible, like using instant death on the likeness, darkness crystals, kind of cheap, so I don't know if you're, 
if Zemus would accept something like that. I doubt it. So that's why I'm putting a few different videos in here. Plus, I mean, the last video with where I killed them without any statuses was much more interesting anyway, so... Alright, Gestal without Quick isn't that much different. The only real difference is that I have to eat the animations from their... from a few attacks from each of them before I can kill them off. Also, no character can die before they launch their Ultima spell, and they also can't have Giga Rasp used on them before they use their Ultima, because then they'll be out of MP and they won't be able to actually use it. There's not really a whole lot else to say here. Just kind of let Locky die from seizure here. Don't really care, he's already done what he needs to do. And the orbs are all dead. It only gets harder from here on out, though. So, Emerald Weapon. The reason why I gave him a difficulty of NA is because I really didn't fight him in any way that really made sense. Basically what happened here was it's like I hit him so fast that he just sat there and did nothing at all. I, I'm not 100% sure why that happened, but I don't know. Just a shot in the dark here, but maybe if I hit him this quickly, he'll basically lose his, one of his lives and Maybe his ATB gauge just goes to zero whenever he loses an, a life and the next life of Emerald Weapon comes in. And then I just keep infinite chain comboing because he just dies each time. I don't know. Zidane just kind of stands there in this fight. There wasn't really any use for him. In fact, I actually should have had him out of my party because Locky has to get hit by that first attack at the beginning so that he's at low HP. He's got the Chef's Knife equipped, which is what the Valiant, what used to be the Valiant Knife, so it does more damage as your HP is lower. So he needs to get hit by that first attack, which means Zidane's just taking up space, really, that he might get hit and that would waste time. Bartz is equipped with a weapon called the Able's Lance, and it's really useful because it has a 50-50 shot at being thrown at every attack at floating enemies and doing an insane amount of damage, so that's really nice to have. And also with Cat Scratch already doing four times its normal damage, that's really nice. The Chef's Knife and the Atma Weapon are really handy 
as well because when the offering is equipped, your attack power is halved with most weapons. So you're really only doing twice as much damage because you get four attacks at half damage. But the chef's knife and the atma weapon don't get their attack power halved. So that's what why they're so good to be used with that setup. And I'm just gonna let those three laugh themselves to death. And dead. Main ad. Fun fact. This is the battle that I ended up redoing the largest number of times, mostly because I just hadn't gotten all the bugs worked out of my strategies yet, because this was actually the first one I did out of all of them. So I went back and redid this fight quite a bit. Now I throw a fire rod here. This is because uh, so if I were to cast magic fire spells with Celeste, she has a gem box equipped, which means that the she'd have to cast two spells at once, and that would just waste some time. So this bit here is kind of weird. I don't understand how Celeste was able to get to dual cast of all things before Edgar could attack or before Bahamut could attack, but some reason she's able to do it. I could also just have Lily attack instead of the Ultimas and it would take about the same amount of time. I'd only have to eat one flare counter but I'd have to actually watch its animation so... Edgar has to hit Bahamut five times there or the run is sunk but it doesn't matter because it's like 30 seconds in, so... Bahamut dies before he even gets a Mega Flare off, which is handy. But it's not like he was actually going to kill me with that Mega Flare, it's just... I don't want to watch the animation that takes up time. As much as the animation's cool and all. The Ultima spells I cast with Celeste may seem like they're a lot slower than the regular attacks from Edgar and Lily in terms of dealing damage. The real point of them is to delay Maynad so that Edgar and Lily both get to have a strike each time she attacks. This Mega Elixir that I just threw with Terra. I, that was silly of me. Her, sh she always uses flare on this turn, and if it hit anyone anyways, I'd restart just because it's a like ten second long animation. So and on the next turn, she's gonna use glare as long as it doesn't hit Edgar. I'm generally good. This Meteo here, I get lucky enough that Edgar dodges it. I don't know if the damage was necessary the extra HP was necessary to KO here with this attack. But it's pretty handy. And also pretty lucky too, because his magic of age is only 30, so... The elemental this is when the difficulty really starts to ramp up a notch as you have to pay attention to your defense as well as your offense at this point. 
Force shields are equipped to everybody because it protects against ground element. One thing that's really important about this battle is to not play the which crystal is which element guessing game because more than likely to get it wrong. Best just to use non-elemental attacks like throw, which is really nice, and more cat scratch. Kane and Gao are both equipped with the Merit Award because there's no Genji Glove here, and plus I want them both to be able to equip the Sniper. The Sniper is a weapon that is like the Abel's Lance, it can deal, it can be thrown as well. However, the Abel's Lance isn't very useful in this battle because it's wholly elemental, so it's not a good idea to use that. Imp Halberds are the strongest throwing weapon I can get because they have max attack power, at least when you're an imp, and but when they're thrown they get the max attack power anyway. Two damage. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And I also think spears have a an attack bonus when they get thrown. Not 100% sure, but I think they do. That Earth Crystal has to die before its third turn, because if it gets its third turn, it will use Earth Rift, which is an attack that can uh, pretty much just wipe out your party in one shot. Unless they've got Float on, but I'm not going to spend my time casting Float in this case. Plus, missing that wind crystal back there wasn't a big deal. Didn't take up that much time, so... Ozma is more of a puzzle boss than anything. Basically, there's some imp that you really shouldn't do when you fight him because they'll provoke pretty much instant death counters. The first one is attacking with Mute on, and I don't bother putting on actual silence protection here because then they won't be able to attack eight times like I want them to be able to. The other thing, well, I'm not going to give any spoilers just because, any more spoilers at least, because probably not everyone's played it already, so I'm sure some people want to figure it out for themselves. Handily enough, Ozma is actually kind of squishy. It takes a lot of damage from those cat scratches. And the same attack, I mean the same tactic used against Emerald Weapon where you just keep hitting him and he stays paralyzed works here too. That Mega Elixir was entirely useless because he never does anything for the rest of the battle. So. I had real strategies planned out for these guys too, but ended up not being necessary. But at least I know I could have defeated them without having this come up, but there was real no way no real way to avoid this without simply letting them attack, but Cat Scratch is really handy in the Revelations hacks because uh, he'll use it every single time. But in the other hacks, he'll spend half the time using normal attacks and he'll be stuck in rage status like usual. So that's why I only use it in the three that are Final Fantasy Revelations.
So proto babble with the use of the old spell, the uh, three out of ten is not a mistake. That it, he really is that easy with the old spell. The old spell basically what it does is it decreases the lo the enemy's level to half of what it normally is, like Discord does. However, unlike Discord, it isn't blocked by bosses, so it works on anything. So. Now, granted, it only has about a 50-50 chance of working, so getting four olds in a row like I do here is about a 1 out of 16 chance. But it's still in, like, the first 20, 30 seconds of the battle, so not that hard to restart at this point. Pretty much turns his attacks from Grim Reaper Dangerous to Petting Zoo Dangerous, so... Even region from Azura is enough to make his attacks pretty much worthless at this point. He really can't kill me. As long as I'm protected from ninth dimension, that'll still be just as potent as ever, but with safety bits, it's a non event anyway. I should have really had three attackers here and just had Celeste send both rounds of old out, but. Oh well, it doesn't make that big a deal anyway. Also, this wastes a lot of time. Never they die and get revived. One thing about Proto Babel and Omega, you having good defenses really doesn't make that much of a difference in this case because most of their attacks cut through defenses anyway so generally it's a good idea to stack your characters as offensively as possible give them every little bit bigger boost you can because having 230 defense or having 120 defense isn't gonna do anything different for most attacks Pretty sure Lily's next attack here finishes them off. This next battle, though, without old, is definitely on the other end of the scale. This was really difficult. Although, it doesn't help that I was pretty much like half asleep when I did this. See, You'll see that I kind of have a delay in my attacks at some point. And they were just kind of stupid. But nothing came out of them, thankfully, because I just got that lucky. He counters with laser barrage here, but that's okay because I figured I probably would set up Azura anyway. All four of my characters have safety bits because he uses ninth dimension a lot, and having that become pretty much a non event is very helpful.
no particular character here is a healer though they all heal and attack equally sorry about the pause that it was just my dad wanting to say something to me One thing that you'll notice towards the end of the battle is that he never actually enters his second phase. I'm pretty sure what happened there was that I just skipped over the HP range in which he can actually go into his second phase. Sort of like how there's a certain amount of HP between which Zero Miss will heal himself in Final Fantasy IV, and if you throw the knife at him at the right time, he'll completely skip that and you'll end up only having to fight half the boss you normally would. Now, if you notice back there, I was really slow with it entering in their attack commands. If you hadn't have used 9th Dimension there, that could have been bad. But I got really lucky. Didn't make a difference. Badly timed laser barrage here, but... What can I do? I had to eat at least one. I generally tend to wait around a lot to see what he does before I try to do anything. Right there though, I should have known that he would have used two LT babbles after that ninth dimension, but I made a mistake. Thankfully he hit Edgar twice, which meant I, which meant I never went and hit him when he was when anybody was doing a thousand damage. So I just got really lucky. Right there, I was really slow with selecting Terra's attack command, and ended up eating an LT babble to her. Thankfully, I know that wasn't a mistake, or at least not a huge mistake, because she actually ends the fight right here, so I got really lucky that that didn't matter. Alright, so now for easily the hardest battle out of all of these. Music that's playing is called Grand Finale, which is kind of fitting. Honestly, no, not prepared. Not prepared at all. You have to be really on the ball in this battle with when you're attacking with each character. For example, right there, just the time between when I selected Edgar and when I selected Celeste's attacks commands, I knew he was going to slip Omegaard probably between them. Edgar needs to attack first because otherwise he's just wasting his time hitting a brick wall. And Celeste needs to cast a spell afterwards because I, she needs to actually dispel the Omegaard. Azura is really helpful here for life 3 especially if he decides to counter Dispel with Blaster. For some reason, after you Dispel him right there, his Omegar breaks, and then he always seems to get another attack after his counter. I don't know why that happens, but... Thankfully here, he pretty much did the perfect thing, and used Maelstrom on Edgar and Celeste. I can slip in some extra damage with Terra there. 
need every bit I can get in this battle. You want to wait in the menu as much as you can without uh, wasting your character's chances to attack because after a certain amount of time he'll overheat and start to use him and he'll use two emissions, he'll flash twice. You still can't really get out of one. I you probably can, I just wasn't able to do it myself. But that'll help avoid a second one. As you'll see, I'm only one attack short of actually defeating him before he uses before he overheats. But I figured if I attacked right there with Lily and Terra, I wouldn't have gotten it off in time anyway, so for some reason I for whatever reason, I don't even know why I did that. I selected to spell even though he obviously didn't put up Omegard, but it ends up coming to nothing anyway because he ends up killing Celeste, which is really convenient for me. So there you have it. That was the fastest I could do it. Who knows, maybe someone else has done it faster. But I still feel pretty satisfied with that.